So long, good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and uh, today's video is a highly requested one actually. You've been asking me several times, different people, how it is possible to, if it is possible to create multi-language reports in Power BI and that is what we are going to do today. Before we start, and I want to say two things. The first one is that yes, it is possible to do. The second thing is not all the way. So <laughs> just follow me on the video and I'll explain you what I mean in a second. So let's begin. So as I've told you before, this is a highly requested video. Uh, we have, for example, Giovanni or Anam that actually have asked me like, okay, how do you build multilingual reports? And um, this is exactly what we will do in this video. So let's move into Power BI to start building the report. Okay, so here we are in Power BI and this is the North Wind data set. And what I've done is I've just imported the categories table. And the reason for that is just to make it easier for you to, to understand and focus on what we're doing. So what we have here is a simple table. When you import it from uh, the North Wind data set, this is how it would look like. By the way, for those of you that don't know what the North Wind data set is, it's just a source that I usually do for my demos where uh, I can just import data from an online source. And I have a video below on how to do that in case you want to use it. But what is important here is to say that I have a table that contains category ID, category name and description, and this is in English, okay? So what I have done is actually I've added a column with that is called language. And here I said that, yes, this is English. And this column is a very simple one. It's just a custom column that contains the word English. Now, I also have a table called translated where I've put the same category names in two different languages. So I have it in Spanish and in Swedish. So it's the same names with different languages. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to append those two tables. So we go here to append queries. We select the translated tables and voila, here we have it. I didn't take the time to translate the description. So perhaps if we just remove it. So here we have the category ID, the category name, and we have the language that it belongs to. So another thing that I've done also is I've created a parameter. So to create a parameter, you just click here, manage parameters, and then here you click new. So I've called this parameter category language. And it's just a list of values. And it contains the languages that we have. It contains the word English, Spanish, and Swedish, and the current value is English. So nothing strange there. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our category table and we're going to filter it by whatever parameter is being selected. Now we have selected English. So when I go here to language and text filters equals, I choose here parameter and this is the only parameter we have. So it gets pre-selected category language. So look what happens. Because I've chosen English in the parameter, these filters to English. If I go here and choose Spanish, this change to the Spanish categories. So easy, right? So this is the way you would do it to change the contents of tables. Let's go into Power BI. And here we have the list categories in Spanish because our um, parameter was Spanish, but let's change that. So you see how it works. If we go here at queries, edit parameters, and we put it in Swedish, apply changes, it reloads, and there you go. Drücker after that flinger. So you see that it is now in Swedish. So this is the, an easy way to actually change the contents. Let's 
Do it one more time. Edit parameters, put it back in English. And then when you click a play ch changes, then this thing will change to English, right? And now you're going to say, okay, Ruth, this is wonderful, but what about the title? And this is where things work, but don't. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, you, you just hear me out because you can actually change and translate also the headers, but then it won't not work anyway. Let, let me just for the sake of it, show you how it, how you can change the name, but then I will show you what happens when you do is it's so sad, <laughs> but okay, let's do it. We go back to the query editor and now I've had exactly the same copied here. Okay. Let's again delete the description so it doesn't bother us. So here we have already the filter applied. You know, here is where it says that if language equals the parameter that is selected, filter by that. Okay, so that's cool. So what we want to do now is to translate the header also. And uh, this is actually a trick that I've shown you before. Actually, I haven't shown you that. It was Colin Taylor that did. Let me remind you of that. So I don't know if you remember this video or if you've seen it, but in this video, Colin Taylor was really, really kind to actually show me, show us how to do, how to manage header names in bulk. And this is exactly the technique that we're going to use for our translation. Um, I will go a little bit fast on how this is done because, you know, he spends 10 minutes doing that and it, it feels a pity that I would do it again. It would make the video too long. But I will put a link of, from this video to, in the description box so you can watch Colin do um, the magic that he's doing. He explains everything in very, very deep detail so you will be able to follow along. And uh, just you know, Colin Taylor has started his own YouTube channel. It's called the Data Miners Union. Well, he will talk a little bit about business intelligence. So uh, if you want to follow him, uh, just make sure that you go to the Data Miners Union. I will pu uh, put a link on the description box also so you can see what other cool tricks Colin has. But with that said, Let's go back to our Power BI file and uh, get things going. Okay, so here we are back in Power BI and now we're going to do the magic that Colin did. I'm going to do it a little bit fast because again, he's explaining everything on his video, but I just will show you very, very quickly. So what I have is basically a table with this is the language, the default language of your report. So it could be like, normally it is in English, but I want to translate it from English to Spanish, or normally it's in Spanish, but I want it from Spanish to Swedish or whatever. So if your default language is English, you still need to have an English column. And I'll show you in a second why. But this is what you need. So you have the default language and then you have the title Spanish and the language is Swedish language as the translation and then English the translation. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to demote the headers. We are then going to transpose them. And again, Colin goes into very, very deep detail about why we're doing all these things. So make sure to check that video. And once we have transposed these, we're actually going to filter this so we get the languages that we want. And we're going to do text filter equals. And the first is the default language because we always want to get that language or the language that the user selected. And in this case, or means that I want both. Not sorry, not English, default. Oh, sorry. You have to choose parameter and then the parameter, okay? And what that will do is it will keep the default language and then 
you will switch to um, English or Spanish or whatever that is. So great. What do we need to do now is we need to remove this one. We don't need it anymore. And what we need to do is transform this into a list of lists. Okay. And the way to do that, you click on the FX and then here you write table two columns. And that means transform these to a list. And this is a list of lists. So it's a list that contains a list or a few lists in this case. And you know, each row contains both descriptions in the different languages, which is exactly what we want. Perfect. So how do we translate these into changing names here? Now, this is a trick that he, Colin explains. So let's do it very, very quickly. Let's remove that. Here, we're going to change category ID for one and then look at the code. You can see here what's going on. It's saying, okay, the category ID, this is hard coded, substituted by one. So this is a list. If I rename this, Again, it will create another list. So it's a list within a list, which is exactly what we have in here. So what we need to do is remove all that. And here, the column description is, of course, is not course it's not we've been removing it all the way there, let's remove it so that there is no column description what am I going to do with that sorry true okay so now it worked so now it translate English to English mm, not so interesting but we're going to load this and then you're going to see it in action it's actually quite beautiful but unfortunately it doesn't work I know I know it's crazy Let's come here. So what do we ha have now? This is the old one. This is the new one. We have the category name with the categories and let's do it a little bit bigger. I shouldn't bother because you see what's going to happen in a second, but just so you see. So we have category name and everything in English. Again, home, edit parameters. We're going to change it to Spanish. Apply and boom, <laughs> it not only breaks the table, it breaks my heart too. What is this? You know, somehow Power BI is hard coding the names. I mean, just horrible. So if you go in here and put the data, it is in the right language. It is in the Spanish. So the technique works, but because Power BI somehow is hardcoding things in the background. It doesn't. Oh, I mean, it's when you're so close, but still you're not. Let's do it again. Edit parameters, put it in Swedish. We change it, fix this, and guess what you have here? Yes, Swedish. It is so annoying. I cannot believe that the name is being hardcoded that way or, or whatever is happening. I don't know if you know what's going on in a way to avoid this, please give me a shout because I would love to know. I mean, I've been doing translations without changing the header names because it breaks. I mean, if you create your graph or whatever it is, everything will break as soon as you change the language, which is such a pity because it's such a cool trick. And I've been using these for, you know, international customers that have uh, like a lot of sites and they want to have their, they have their data translated. So they just want to display it in, in the local country, which is a normal requirement. But uh, they have to keep the column names in English because the rest won't work. Or 
let's say I haven't found a way to make it work. If you know, please shout it out. I would love to know. So yes, you can do multi-language reports, but not all the way as you perhaps would like it. But hopefully this will take you halfway until we figure out how to manage these horror coded things. Okay. So this is all for today. Um, as usual, if you like the video, just let me know by liking it or please share it with those you think might also like the video. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions about the video, let me know in the comment box or any of the social channels that I list below. And please subscribe. I publish Power BI videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, where Mondays are for M, Fridays for DAX and Wednesday for everything in between like a Wednesday normally is. And uh, make sure you hit the bell to receive notifications when I publish a new video. Um, YouTube has changed the rules and that doesn't happen anymore unless you click that beautiful bell there. Okay, so have a great evening. Bye.